we're just pulling away from the house, heading out onto the road. The sun is just over the horizon. We're riding along the road with the snake taking a nap there. Coming into West Richland, we pass the fire station and we can see the sun is coming up and the wind is blowing. We're ready for a windy ride today. Here's a tour down Main Street in West Richland. Bright lights of the West Richland Library. There's Dean's Automotive on Van Giesen as we head between West Richland and Richland. And then we're just pulling into the town of Richland. We'll take a little tour through the neighborhoods with alphabet houses left over from when the Hanford site was built. Here's a little tour through Howard Amon Park in Richland. As the sun is rising over the Columbia River, there's Columbia Point Marina with the morning walkers out for a stroll. We climb up this hill to the I-182 Twin Bridges and then we'll go across over to Pasco, crossing over the Columbia River. Here we're riding through Chiawana Park in Pasco. So this uh, riverfront trail is really one of the gems of the Tri-Cities. It's a 20 plus mile loop and you can extend it on either end. Lots of beautiful views along the way ride right along the river. You can go over the bridges and back. Now we're going right by the historically famous Moore Mansion as we go underneath the Blue Bridge. The cable bridge connects Pasco and Kennewick. Now we travel through downtown Pasco as we get ready to head out of the Tri-Cities and into the country.
As we head out of Pasco and into the country over Highway 12, here's an animated recap of our trip through the Tri-Cities. North of Pasco, workers are cutting asparagus at Middleton Six Sons Farm. It reminds me of doing the same work growing up in Sunnyside. Well, riding in town along the river is beautiful. Out in the country, it's got its own special kind of beauty with the rolling green fields and the, the waving crops and the wind. It's just a beautiful, beautiful ride out here among the circle lines. On the Pasco Colotus Highway, about 15 miles north of Pasco, is this old abandoned schoolhouse. It's called the Neff School because it's on the Neff property. It was last used around 1929. You can just imagine the kids playing around outside and the big windows facing east to allow the sun to shine in. This school was actually used for scenes in the 1998 movie, The Basket. Cruising along on the Pasco Colotus Road. Hanging in there so far, we're at about 42 miles so far from home. I gotta say, I was worried about the wind today. So far, it's cooperating, mostly quartering from the rear. This is a rural school north of Pasco called the Star School District. It serves kindergarten through sixth grade. Heading north, we travel through the irrigated farmland north of Pasco. We're on the Pasco Colotus Highway, and we're climbing in elevation to one of the highest points on this trip. Then we'll drop down into the town of Colotus.
that's all right. We'll find another discreet location. Just taking a break here. Gonna have some uh, hydration and a little peanut butter sandwich. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Colotus. That's the farmer's daughter's store over there, that brick building with the uh, grain silo behind. Some other miscellaneous businesses. I don't know that any of them are open. However, there's a nice uh, Colotus Coyotes with a K mural over there it says you can't make a dream or a team with drugs as your partner and i figured out why the restroom is closed apparently they had a problem with vandalism Taking a quick little tour of the town of Colotus, you'll notice grain elevators in almost all these towns and along the sides of the road with bushels and bushels, probably in the millions of wheat being harvested in this part of the country. One of the most beautiful things about this ride that I love is these beautiful coolies. You can see the cliffs and the rocks along the sides which were scoured out by ancient floods. They call this the channeled scablands and you can see why but it's just a special kind of beauty. Here we come up to the turn off to Starbuck and Palouse Falls, just a beautiful scenic area. I saw a ride on YouTube on the Gravel Brain Trust a few weeks ago where he ended up in Starbuck. So it's kind of an inspiration for me. Here's a shout out to the Gravel Brain Trust. Riding along Highway 260, I had the wind at my back as I went from Colotus to Washtukna. Each of these towns have a population of around 200.
On the north end of Washtuckna is that northwest bus. It's hard to miss as it's covered with graffiti, an opportunity for people to express themselves with spray paint. Just turned on to La Crosse Airport Road. We're in the home stretch. Just some information for you. We're at about 105 miles. Temperature right now is 74 degrees. It was about 56 most of the way until about Colotus and then it warmed up more. So we're almost there. I can see a grain elevator in the near distance. Along this road is a light on a tower. It looks like the remnants of an airport, but I don't know if it's functional anymore. Here we are in the town of La Crosse, population 332 according to Google, named after La Crosse, Wisconsin. We'll take a little tour and then end up in the city park. Here we are in La Crosse, Washington. Just 
gave you the tour through the town. Here's the beautiful city park, gazebo, gathering place, lots of trees. 